Previously, I discussed the different types of authentication mechanisms for using different applications with single sign-on. Let's take a closer look at that. So I'm in the Entra Admin Center, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to where it says Applications. And once you expand that, you have a couple of options. In App Registrations, you have the opportunity to register your own application and then use the various different authentication mechanisms to set up single sign-on. Now, this is not something you would do in an introduction course. Course. This is definitely more of an advanced type of course, but something you would do as a cloud administrator is push out enterprise applications for single sign-on. So when you click on enterprise applications, you might notice that there is another application option if you ever use Intune. In Intune, you can push out applications through a company portal app that you can download on your from your store, either the Android or the iPhone store. And then you can push out applications or allow users to install applications that way. This is different. These are single sign-on applications that have already been registered with Microsoft and they're ready to be used. So for for instance, if I want to use a new application, I'll just click on the new application option and you can see a lot of different applications already just in this one section. You also have the opportunity to create your own application as well. Once again, that's more of an advanced kind of thing. So we're just going to focus on the applications that are already here. Let's take Adobe, for example. If I scroll down, you can see one Adobe application, but I know for a fact there are a lot more Adobe applications that are available. So I'm going to type in Adobe just to show you all the different ones that show up. So here you can see Adobe Identity, Sign, SAML for Identity Management, Experience Manager, and many others. So even if you don't see the application you're looking for, you can go ahead and search for it and you can see what might be out there. There's also an option for on-premises applications. So these are applications that you would install on-premises, say in an Active Directory domain, but would still use single sign-on and you would download a private network connector in order to connect your on-premises applications into the Azure cloud. So for example, if you were going to have a special accounting application that installed on a local server instead of in the Azure cloud, you would install that on the server, but it would still use single sign-on from Azure and enter ID in order to authenticate the users. I'm going to go ahead and add an application and one application a lot of people use, but then they forget they have it is Slack. And I'll just go ahead and take a look on the right hand side. You can see it's going to use SAML for its sign on for single sign on mode. And as I mentioned in a previous video, there's multiple different authentications besides SAML. There's also OAuth is another one and several others. I'm going to click on create and it's adding that application in. Next, I can assign users and groups to be able to use this. So I'll click on Add User Group. And I'll choose the Accounting Group Users and click Select. And Assign. I can also assign owners for this application to be able to make changes. So I'll click Add. And I'll choose my admin account to be able to make changes in the future, but you could also choose uh, other users as well. And now I have an owner that's able to make changes to the Slack application. By default, as the global administrator, I already have that particular role. But if you're not a global administrator, you want to give access to someone who's not, you can do that by adding them as an owner here. You can also add additional roles and administrators as well, but I'm just going to go ahead and move on because most people don't need anything besides the users, groups, and owners. Now let's take a look at single sign-on. After we click on single sign-on, you see you have a couple of different options, or actually several. One is going to be disabled, which is the default for this application, where when the user goes ahead and launches this application for Slack, they will be prompted for their username and password. And that's the typical way that a lot of people do it. But that's only because they may not realize that they can also do single sign-on. So you can do that using SAML. Now, this requires some additional setup that goes beyond the scope of this particular course. 
However, it doesn't take long to learn that. Here, I can click on Learn More. It opens up a new tab. And I remember the first time that I set up SAML and OAuth, it usually only took about an hour to read through this and set up the authentication the way Microsoft wants it. So feel free to go ahead and use that option. I'm going to click on Change Single Sign-On Mode. The other option is Linked. So this is going to be linked to a specific URL, so the sign-in URL. So when the user goes to open up Slack, instead of being automatically signed in like they would with SAML, they'll just be redirected to a web page to log in at that time. So you can choose which option is best for you. Provisioning is another option. So I'll click on provisioning and they haven't quite perfected this yet because if you want to get this provision, it'll actually redirect you portal.azure.com in order to get started. However, what the idea is here is to either manually allow the user to install this or to automatically provision it using specific admin credentials. And here's where it's going to redirect you to portal.azure.com. I'm just making you aware of the fact that you can automatically provision this application in case you decide you would like to. When I go back into the app registrations, you see that Slack has been added simply by creating that Slack option under Enterprise Applications. It'll all show up here. So I'll go back into it one more time. And it shows a lot of the same options that we looked at earlier, such as the owners, as well as role administrators, things like that. But take a look at the Quick Start option. And here you have a lot of options for configuring this Slack application, such as a web app, mobile and desktop app, etc. I'm going to go back to the enterprise applications. And here we have some user settings that you can go in and set up users for allowing or disallowing specific options, such as whether or not they can use enterprise applications or Office 365 settings. This is an interesting option here that says that users can only see Office 365 apps in their 365 portal. By default, that's no, but you can set up to three applications here to automatically have them be available, according to the instructions here, on the first day of the work so they can go ahead and get started working right away. And if you don't see what you're looking for, you can click on Load More, and you can also do a search. So for instance, I put in Office and we get lots of different Office options, such as the Office 365 portal, as well as many others. We talked about conditional access in a previous video, and there's conditional access for applications, for enterprise applications as well. Conditional access basically says specific things that will allow or disallow users to be able to use that particular service. And in this case, the access isn't just for signing into Enter ID, it's for accessing an application with an Enter ID. It's very similar to the conditional access that I showed you earlier, it just has to do with applications specifically. Consent and permissions allows an application to be installed requiring user consent or just allowing user consent or allow user consent for apps from verified publishers. It just depends on which option you choose. You also have the option for setting up consent for group ownership. You could say do not allow group ownership consent, allow it or allow it for all group owners as well. Same thing for admin consent. If you choose yes, then you can go ahead and allow users to request the admin to be able to install an application. And then you have classifications as well. So you have for most uh, used permissions at the bottom, you have user read, offline access, and various other things for the data in those applications. In most cases, the defaults are fine for most organizations, but you can feel free to go in and make changes as needed. As usual, we have sign-in logs, usage and insights, audit logs, things like that. So we know how things are going with our applications. We can see what various different users have been up to. And here are the sign-in logs. And most of this, of course, is the admin, but we also have video user, which had previously signed in. And it tells us what the status was, whether success or failure, or in this case, interrupted, where, where I didn't save my work and I just exited out. I'm going to go back to all applications. Now let's look at a practical use of adding in this application. So just as a summary, 
I added in the application and then I configured access for the users. In this case, it was the accounting group users. And I made all the settings the way I wanted them in order for that user to work. Now, in your case, you might also add the single sign on SAML or OAuth or whatever it is that you're using, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and go to the next step. I've gone ahead and downloaded Firefox. I'm going to open up Firefox and I'm going to type in myapps.microsoft.com. This is what the users use to log in. And you can set this up as a favorite. You could push it out through group policy or through any option uh, that you have for automating access to particular websites. So when I log in, it's going to prompt me for the username and password. And since I'm logged in as video user, it went ahead and defaulted to that. And now I am logged in. Let's take a look and see what apps show up. And there is my Slack app that I just added. So if I'd like to, I can click on that. And after a couple of minutes, the application is installed and you can go ahead and start using it. And here's the application ready to go. Once again, if I configured SAML as it recommended for this particular application, then it would have automatically logged me into Slack. But otherwise, I can just go ahead and click sign on to Slack and then use whatever credentials I need in order to get into the application. Now you know how to add an enterprise application, configure it for access, and install it as a user using Entra ID.